wisdom and insight for worship leaders and music teams all around the world. For more details, email thewell at planetshakers.com. Hi everyone and welcome to The Well. Welcome. Andy? Welcome. Yeah, yeah welcome everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Here we are in the USA still, in Hawaii, Ooh. and we're having a great time. Aloha. Bringing you the second episode, edition of The Well to you from Hawaii. And uh, BJ is of course still at Melbourne, we're going to hear from him later in the episode. But uh, why don't you check us out on Instagram and Twitter because we are showing you what we're doing on there, which is the well underscore PS, or the Facebook page is Planet Shakers dash the well. And keep writing in questions. We've got so many questions. Again, I always say this, but we're definitely not going to get through all of them, but hopefully we will get to most of them. Great. So let's talk about the last few weeks where we've been touring all around the US and debrief. Mm and say what was good and bad and hopefully help people mm. understand the, and how to navigate through the ups and downs of touring. Mm. Well, I think la- since last episode, we uh, went to Canada, Montreal. Yes, we Montreal. Yes. We went to... Bonjour. Where else did we go? We went to um, we Ohio. Went to, yes, we were in North Carolina. North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, Dallas. Yep. Which, hopefully you guys saw it. We're on uh, Daystar Television. Mm-hmm. And uh, television, sound very old school, I'd say that. Uh, Daystar TV, which is awesome. Mm. And you can, um, can people watch it? Maybe, check it out on the net. Type in Daystar yeah. Planet Shakers. You might Planet Shakers it. Live. But that was really good. Mm. That um, was powerful. Phoenix, we're in Phoenix as well. Phoenix, Arizona, Don't very hot. Mm. And that, here we are. That was really cool. I really loved um, Canada, to be honest. Yeah, yes. amazing time. We, went to, we played at this church in there in Montreal, and they were, they were very passionate, very di- culturally diverse. There's a lot of Africans, a lot of Spanish people, yeah. a lot of Canadians, which they speak French there. Yes, mm. that's in uh, French Canada. Oui, oui, oui. French-speaking Canada in Quebec. Yeah. So, yeah, amazingly cultural. <laughs> and, Wouldn't you say? And it brings a yes. different um, oui. vibe because you have to have a translator. Yes. When, yes. You're, when you're preaching and when you're even when we're saying things throughout our praise and worship leading. Mm. That was would, challenging. Yeah. yeah. It's you, it's so different. Not, not, not many people would have have to do that, but you have to do have to think differently how you're talking. Mm. Yeah. Like spacing it out, slowing it down, so yeah. it's comprehensible to everybody. Mm-hmm. That's right. What was your guys' highlight? Yeah, I would say Montreal as well. Yeah. Of this, yeah, of this trip. Um, in terms of ministry, I think that was the ministry highlight because yeah. it felt like, I mean, it felt like God did something really powerful, and obviously He has in every place that yeah. we've gone. Um, but I think you could feel the real significance of it there, and it, and I think as well being somewhere for a, a couple of days in a row, you're yeah. able to build upon each That's session. Right. And so we don't always have the opportunity to do that, but we did in Montreal. So yeah. And the people were very hungry for God, and I think that makes a huge difference yeah. with the anticipation, the faith. You know, the atmosphere was very charged with, a, you know, an expectation that God was going to move. And so even though we were English speaking and they were French speaking. I mean, a lot of them understood English, which was fantastic. Mm. Um, The language wasn't a barrier because people's hearts were so open, so hungry for God. And so each particular night we were able to just press into God even more. And by the last night, um, really, God did something very, Mm. very powerful. We had a wonderful free worship time and Mm. we just allowed God to move. Mm. Um, And I wasn't in any hurry to you know, push it along in the program, but just to have a bit of space, able to breathe, just let the Holy Spirit begin to move, and that's exactly what happened. It was powerful. And I think as well, a, a pivotal moment there amongst all of that was actually you talking to the band in the midst of that, and I think that was a cool thing, worship leader sensing God. We're on the fringe or on the, the cusp of God doing something really powerful here and you sensing we as a band need to push into that, press mm-hmm. into that. And so as a practical thing, you you have the ability to be able to speak to us with the microphone that you have, but if you didn't, you would, I'm sure, turn around to us and encourage us. Yeah. And I think as a band, felt like we really responded to that and yeah. stepped into that. And so I think that as well as a band and something we would always want to encourage other people as yeah. well is everything was going well. It was a great night already, yeah. but sensing, wow, this... We could really step into something here, and that was the result. Mm. And that's really what you're doing as a worship leader. You're really trying to sense the, 
the uh, move of God in the atmosphere and be very aware of what he's doing, what he's saying, mm. what he wants to do next, and then, you know, really going with that. As, as a worship leader, I believe that's a skill that we really need to develop because hearing the voice of God and then being led by the voice of God, um, that's going to be the difference between a, a good meeting and an awesome meeting mm, because yeah. you know you're just really yielding yourself to God but being very open to what he's saying and that's exactly what happened that particular night I, I felt I felt like you know being um, maybe on the edge of a cliff and I had that feeling of I could jump now mm. and I could have a really fun experience so yeah I pressed my button and had a little conversation and and uh, it, it was great so God wants to do more than we sometimes imagine he wants to do. Mm. Yeah, and it was great because the band were with you too. And it's not just about the worship leader going there because if the band's not with them, the worship leader will be, won't be able to go there. And so that was the great thing that we were all in unity, mm -hmm. that we, as soon as you were like, let's go, we were there with you. And that's the encouragement to all the bands, musicians yeah. out there. It's not just the worship leader leading, but it's our job as a musician to really tap into the spirit and go with where the worship leader is going as well. Don't leave it just up to the worship leader, even though they're the one on the front line leading the charge. It's just as much, you've got to have that spiritual discernment and knowing, know when to push, know when to you know, give it what you need to give it to get mm. to that place. Mm. I mean, one of the um, more discouraging moments for me, whether mm -hmm. I should be this honest, mm. was um, being in a particular place and there were um, worship leaders, band members, I know of that particular um, place that were part of the worship team and you know when we were leading people in praise and worship they were just standing there and um, observing us and mm. at different times folding their arms and maybe even sitting down at different times throughout mm. the worship and um, I think that's a little bit of a, a danger that I suppose we can fall into. We've got our own styles mm. as worship leaders or bands mm. and then when a, a different band comes in, a mm. different group comes in, we could become spectators and and so I think that's the difference between a worshipper and a musician. Because mm, some people can just be a musician mm. and participate in worship and be part of a great sound or you can be a true worshipper and it doesn't matter what style comes through your church it doesn't matter whether you like the music or know the music you have a heart of worship and so you will tap into God no matter the style mm -hmm. and these days this is where people become picky no I like this style mm, no yeah. I, I prefer that style and so um, because they prefer a style they'll enter into God's presence using that style very easily and then reject another style and then miss out on entering into God's presence mm. and so style cannot be the reason mm. why we worship or not That's right. yeah, or yeah. being an observer of another worship team I don't want to observe them I want to worship with mm. them so yeah. I, I felt like, oh, that's such a shame. Yeah. We shouldn't be led into that kind of a danger mm. because then, um, yeah, we're just musicians rather than worshippers. Yeah, and I think that's something we endeavour to be conscious of mm. if, you know, we're involved in services, even on tour, and the local church team might be leading worship while yeah. before we come on or something. And I think... Not because we want to be putting on a show by any means, but we're quite deliberate to, to be worshipping and be demonstrating yes. the fact that we're not waiting till we're on stage yeah. to be engaging in worship. Yeah. And I think it's 100% not about being on show for people, but it is understanding that if I want to lead people to a place in worship, then I've got to be leading all of the time. Yeah. Yes. Not just when I get behind the drum kit. Right. Yeah. And so... I think and that's people really might be able to hear right now, I don't know if they can, but... There's another band just rehearsing in the background mm -hmm. and they're the worship team of this church that we're at right now. And so at the beginning of the meeting, we're not going to sit there with, hey, try and impress me. We're going to get in there and Absolutely. we're going to worship. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, BJ is coming to us from Melbourne and he's going to share what's on his heart. So take it away, Beach. Well, guys, my turn to share on uh, what's on my heart. I apologise in advance. I've pretty much lost my voice. It's uh, Sunday voice, and I apologise also for the noise of the production guys over there. We are cleaning up, as I said before. 
Uh, but what's on my heart this week is this um, amazing scripture that I've been really feasting myself on. I'd love to just read it to you. Uh, it's such a common thing that we hear about in church all the time, but um, it's Hebrews 11. It's, it's a great scripture on faith. Uh, it says, Now faith is the assurance, um, the title deed or confirmation of things hoped for, uh, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact uh, what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. I'll read that first bit again. Now, faith is the assurance, the title deed, confirmation of things hoped for uh, or divinely guaranteed. And, you, you know, to be honest, I couldn't get past that first line uh, all week. It's just been encouraging me, feeding me. Um, it's the title deed and the confirmation um, of a promise that God has given to us. So as worship leaders, uh, it's so important that we're feeding ourselves on the promises of God. And um, I just looked up before what a title deed uh, is by definition, and I'd love to read it to you. Um, a title deed is a, a legal deed or document constituting evidence of a right, especially to ownership of property. And so really um, w what this scripture is telling us is that it's, it's ours. What God has promised us is as good as ours. We may not be able to see it. We may not be able to touch it. But faith is the very, uh, the real thing that we can touch and hang on to. So as worship leaders, um, you know, as, as musicians, as anointed men and women of God, we hang on to the promises that God gives us, both in His words and, and even in our conversations with Him. What has God promised you? Uh, has He promised you that you're going to be a powerful, anointed uh, worship leader, well, you can hang on to that and think about that, meditate on that. Uh, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. You know, when I get out onto a platform, that's a promise I'm hanging on to, that I am more than a conqueror as a worship leader. So that's what's been on my heart this week, feeding myself on faith. Well, this week on The Well, we want to show you what's happening here. So I took the camera around during our sound check and I went to all the musicians and just asked them mm. a little bit about their setup and how they and you know what they do and all that sort of stuff so check it out what's going on here jim just a bit of pack maintenance to make sure the old clips are going to hang on oh and then we have a kick drum also don't we, we do. by, and, by andy harasa mm. what are you doing young andy well just adjusting setting up for the moment we've got a lot of and uh, it's always fun when there's yes. the rest you know of the as every drummer would attest to a half already set up kit is like a, a painting that someone's already half painted you know and so it, it, it um, you've got to really be creative every place you go you get a different kit so every place you go you get a different canvas to paint on and uh, you bring your brushes with you um, but you know, so there's a slightly different sound, variables are there. So but yeah, on the road we always, because we don't have enough um, luggage allowance. allowance to bring a whole drum kit. No, we don't do that, not so, like so, so um, I bring pedals, yep. so I'm using DW9000s, yep. I love them. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we bring snare, yep. and I bring uh, cymbals with you on the road. So right. at least you've got some things that are the same. So is that your snare there? It's not actually at the moment, I haven't replaced that yet. Handbone, what are you doing there young chap? I'm just setting up, getting my sweet pedal board. Yeah? My big rig. That is a big rig. What do you, what do, you do with all those pedals, man? It's a new era. No, it's the same as the last era. That's my tuner. That's my volume. That's all I got. Talk us through uh, your, your other, your non-bass setup. My bits. Yeah. This is my synth bass here. It's just a mono. Synthesizer, good for leads and bass stuff. So you use this in, this is our time. This is our time. Where's your head? There it is. There's my head. Yeah. Use that, this is our time. Any other songs? And um, Hunt is Alive. Right. And you're also running the... All the tracks through Ableton at the moment. Is that, you've, you've heard us talk about this on The Well before. So you can see here, that's our track list. Let me just get a bit of a shot of that for the... Uh, in there is a screwdriver. Screw it's literally as simple as one song, next song, next song. Well, actually, just, just a couple of days. Easy. That's just really great. Really great. Just the greatest.
are you looking for, Jim? Gaff tape. Really? Always looking for gaff tape. Are you all set up? I am all set up. Pretty much good to go. I've got to tweak some sounds, tweak some pedals, but I'm all set up. So run, run us through this board here, man. Very good. All right, so I've got all analog pedals except for the digital reverb. Um, starting here, the uh, guitar goes through here to the amp from here. So we've got the OCD. I use that basically like a clean boost um, with a bit of drive to it. And um, this is my uh, lead line, sort of, so I stack those two like that. This would be uh, for all, all lead lines, so something like in Leave Me Astounded, that intro, you've got... Um, That sounds you got, right. you got some serious reverb going on there. Oh, is that a spring that's verb? That's a bit too much. Uh, no, that, so the, the whole setting on the digital reverb, I'd probably back it off, something like that. Might sound a bit better. Let's try it out. That's a bit nicer. Um, so then, this uh, BB Plus, I basically use that for stuff like um, dance, and we've got that big section in the bridge, a bit heavier. And uh, then i got my reverb, uh, my delay, sorry. Which is very important for a guitar two player, or a lead guitar player. Very important. Why do they put the words upside down? It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me either, because, because you're always in, you're always in front of your amp when you're testing. Exactly. So you so gotta it, walk around. What is it? Why is that? Why do they do that? Honestly, I've got no idea. Right. It's a little bit annoying. Right. Here's my pedal board, people. This is the HD500. Got a wireless system here in my volume pedal, which is currently unplugged because I think it's broken. But this is great because I can, wherever I go, whatever arena I go to, I have the same sound. What are you doing there? Show the massager for getting the guys ready for Show it, show it, do it on ham. So ham, this is how I get ham ready. Just 10 minutes of that, he's ready to go. Lovely. Solo, tenderized ham. Get his arms ready. Get his arms ready. Yeah, a couple of whacks in the head, just. Felt that in my halves. What are we doing here, Jim? Oh, man, I feel like that's a good spot for us. What are we doing? We're uh, just getting the distances for the uh, overheads to avoid any unnecessary phase issues. So, you, so what do you tell us? What you're doing? So, what we do is we go even distance from snare. The middle of the snare. Yep. No, nice. that's the um, jack to jack. So we just use a standard old lead. Yep. Hand. Measure it to there. Yeah. Oh, you're pretty close. Yeah. That's a good guess. So they could well, still be in or out of phase, yeah, okay. but at least do the same distance. And, and then you can just flip it, it if they are in phase. Right. Now, people might not know about this, but this is a great little technique. From the middle of the snare. Yeah, here's my tip for the night. Tell us. Probably not going to so play Jim, these very loud because. The middle of the snare thing? I'm under this. Just Very close. Do, I use these do you think all those little hits up there are from beer drumsticks? Probably, and then might have a few tonight. At the same time, so it doesn't cancel itself out. Show us, Andy, show us your um, stick lift. Oh, I have to. Are you going to hit it? Gonna, there's, a, there's a definite. Limitation. <laughs> there you go, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you do it, I'll just, I'll just have to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite a tight snare. We play without the stage and I'm still hitting the stage. <laughs> Yeah. So Josh mate, tell us what's going on with your setup. Well, uh, running main stage three and uh, got different song patches down there and then um, the song was there ready to go. Yep, song list here and then um, different uh, mixes there for the, um, putting different parts together and then I run, I don't like any latency so I run um, the piano off the real um, yes. Even though this is a quite a fast Mac, um, just to me, it just feels different when it's on the computer. Yep. And we've got a Roland RD300 NX, which is not a bad, not a bad model. 
Yeah. But we like that. The 700 NX. 700 NX is our preferred one. Yeah. Yes. And that's the one, Joth, you use on albums. That is the one I use. Yeah. Yep. Correct. So that's cool. And then the most important thing about this setup is right, I have all the keys next to the songs just so there's no mistakes. What's going on here, Ham? Well. Hey, Ham. How you doing? Good. I broke this yes. on an airplane yes. without actually being me breaking it. Which is broke. That's nasty. So that's cool. Things happen on airplanes, don't they? It still works. What? You doing a bit? You doing a bit DJing tonight, are you? I want to be DJing tonight. Do it a little bit. Good fun. Right on, man. Right on. Well, Angie just put a uh, mint in his mouth. He was feeling a bit peckish, I guess. <laughs> but at least he'll have fresh breakfast. I, I didn't want to be breathing all over you had to. Yes, that's no, nice. Very, very considerate. I think yeah. we talked about that on the hygiene. Yeah, you got to so. be considerate. Grace from Indonesia, hello Grace, says, what does it take to stay fit during a series of sleepless tours? Mm. Mm. Stay fit, well, I would say praising God the way that we praise is pretty healthy. Burn a lot of calories. Burn a lot of calories. An hour and a half or two hours a night sometimes playing music and um, we, we put our whole bodies into it. So um, we, we definitely are pretty healthy. We try and eat well though, don't Which we? Which is what I do. And we're pretty deliberate about resting when we can. Whether Even if it's on, yes, a, on a plane. On a plane. I just realised what you said. Get as much sleep as you can and eat, eat, eat as much veggies as you can. That's what I do. Absolutely. That's your motto. Yeah. Eat vegetables. Eat green. But then you go to the gym. I do try and go to a hotel. Um, yeah. Some of the That's guys hit the gym. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I bring my own pillow, actually, so that I can... Do you really? Yeah, I do. So I can go to sleep in any bed in any hotel. Mm. That it, helps yeah. me. Very important. Pillow is important. Uh, next question here is from mm. James. James. Uh, James is from Melbourne. He says, do you think it can be taught perfect pitch or absolute pitch? Do you know what that means? Oh, yes. yeah. I think so. So, like, if, if you haven't heard a note and someone says to you, can you sing a C, that's called perfect pitch. Yes, I think it can. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything can be taught. Like, it just takes, some, some people take longer than others, but it could definitely be taught. Mm. Next question is from Bryant, and he's from Singapore. Hi, Bryant. G'day, Bryant. He says, when you play praise songs... Is it exactly like the track, or do you follow where the Holy Spirit leads? Both. Yeah. Exactly like the track, and basically we have the plan, yeah. and we and we do that, and we're just always obedient to the Holy Spirit. If we want, if He wants us to deviate from the track or the plan, mm. then we do that. Which is probably how we are with everything in our services. Yeah. We have a plan. That's right. Next question is from. Uh, let me just find out his name here. Well, it says J M. So we'll call him JM. Hey, JM. JM. Josh. Mm, Anyways, his first question. How do you record the guitar tracks in your album? Do you still use pods in the studio or do you use actual mic'd up amps? We, we do a bit of both. It depends mm. on the part. Mm. Um, on the last album, believe it or not, I used a... I didn't use either. I used a plug-in uh, called Guitar... Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it is right. Yep. Gold guitar, guitar Rig by IKE Multimedia. Great plug-in. Um, I recommend it. Mm. It's very good. Next question is from Kelvin. Oh, yeah. G'day, Kelvin. Hi, Kelvin. He says, may I know how you guys assign the team to every tour? Is there a roster to follow or does the music director choose? Mm. Good question. Wow. Well, we have a bu- we have a pool pool of people who do the tours. Yes. Uh, we're part of that pool. pool? Like this is, cool. this is the pool. Yeah, that's the pool. And um, basically, we... we Depending on people's availabilities as well. Oh, me and our tour manager Jimmy mm. will try to fit you know the, the team in the right place, and then of course we submit that to Pastor Russell and Sam, and they will event they will be the uh, executive decision on it to make sure they're happy with the team mm. going out because it's very important because the the team going out is, are you happy? Yeah, very happy. Is representing Punch Shake, so mate, it needs to be good. Next question is from Steffi. <coughs> hey Steffi. Steffi. Hey. She's from Melbourne. 
And she says, just wondering how you pick who goes on the tour. Wow. Double question. Yes. But she has another question here. Oh. Uh, have you ever considered yeah, using cool. instruments such as the violin or the cello? No. Yes. Oh, we have. Okay. <laughs> no, we, we have. And, you know, and a lot of our albums have used them. Like, yeah. A lot of the worship songs we love using real uh, strings. Nothing like real strings. Love them. The cello. Amazing. Oh, beautiful. Cello. So, we, we love it. <laughs> cello. Uh, I've got I'll a question here from... It says Logos. We'll just call him Logos. 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 Uh, we are Logos. from. Logos. We're a mission church in Hong Kong. We're about to hit somewhat of our second year since being established. Wondering if you Good celebrate job. such milestones, especially in your campuses. Yes, we do. We have yearly anniversaries. Yeah, and we we try to make something special of it. Yeah. Do an item. Uh, do something, some a video cool videos. footage of the previous year, and yep. all the statistics of people getting saved and healed and baptized, and yeah. all of those things. Yeah, you've got to celebrate these great celebrate. things that God does. You got to. Yeah, because your team has been part of that miracle, so yeah, got to spend some time partying. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Next question is from Harold, and he says, "When you are on tour, where do you church?" Where do we church? Generally, we're we're playing. At the church that we are playing at. We church at church. (laughs) And also, who triggers your backing tracks when you are performing live? Yeah, yeah, at at home, in church, the drummer does it because we use an iPad. But on tour, we use a program with Ableton and a laptop. So our bass player, Josh Ham, does. Mm, Because he's a whiz, isn't he? He is. He's a whiz. Button pressing is amazing. Look, we've got a few more questions, but I think we should save these for the next episode. Okay. Okay. Um, But if you have any questions that you'd like to know, anything about what we do or just anything in general, we will endeavour to answer that for you. Email the well at planetshakers.com. We'd love to hear from you. Good idea. We always like to finish off with giving you some advice for this weekend. That's right. And so... Why don't you take it away, Andy? Would love to. My advice is to all the band members out there, again, and that is to be so responsive to your worship leader yep. and respond immediately. Right. Um, try not to take a long time to think through it. It's taken me a while, hasn't it? <laughs> but uh, we were talking about it earlier in the uh, in the episode, just to be so responsive, uh, uh, responsive and to be flowing with the worship leader. And, uh, yeah, that'll help. Yeah. Unity, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good advice. Oh, great advice. My turn? Oh, okay. Well, I would like to... Oh, no, BJ. Like BJ. <laughs> mm. I would like you to eat healthy like I do. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do. Yeah. I eat greens Declare and I eat, I eat vegetables and it's what Declare I do. Declare that healthiness. And my final advice would be to everyone that um, is out there, don't just be a musician, be a worshipper. Mm. Be a musician. Eric. And that is what God is looking for. Mm. And I love what the Bible says there, you know, that God is looking for worshippers who worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so there is an action that God is performing right now. He is seeking out worshippers. And, Mm. uh, yeah. That's great advice. What about we hear from BJ? Good idea. BJ, tell us your advice. Thanks, guys. My advice for this week is uh, to go on Mm. and, and use faith as a tool for this weekend. Go to God, get some promises from Him. Go to His Word, search out some promises from Him, specifically for this weekend, you know, this week just gone past. Um, I've really been digging in the Word and I've been writing out His promises on on um, pieces of paper and it's been really just such a, uh, a strengthening and an encouraging time and it's stretching me and it's growing me. And, and as you go into this weekend, I'd encourage you to do the same thing. Go get some specific promises from God for this weekend. Love you. I've got an idea. <laughs> yes. How about you mm. read everyone the missionary statement? Yeah, but missionary? I can't, Joth, because I haven't got my glasses. And you know, I'm getting old, eyes aren't working like they used to. Well, be. how about this? Job, Look, I grew up loving, you know, tricks and, and optical illusions and all that yes. sort of stuff. So, anyways, why don't you, now that you got glasses on, why don't you a read... A Christian wizard. A Christian wizard. Uh, why don't you read <laughs> on the musicianary statement? We are musicianaries, powerful men and women of God that play skillfully unto the Lord, worshipping in spirit and in truth. With a heart of unity, we serve the church locally and around the world with our gifts. We exist to usher the body into a corporate and personal encounter with the living God. Amen. 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 Have a good week, guys. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.